and a warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining me here on today's Conversations with Michael show. Let's all just take a deep breath here as we let everybody tune in that are joining us here on our three different Facebook pages. Very good. We come together each month to offer support to any awakened human being who has chosen to do something that not too many people do, to have an embodied human soul relationship. So for those of you that might be new to this show, feel free to visit our website at www.theteachingsofmichael.com. There you're going to find a variety of heart-based programs and services that are all designed to be of service to the, any awakened human being. And of course, today we are simulcasting today's show on three different Facebook pages from our home studio outside Portland, Oregon. In the future here, could be even next month, we'll be adding uh, the YouTube channel back to this simulcast streaming as we play with uh, some other services that allow us to do this. So if you missed the live version, you can always watch the recording on our website or go to our YouTube channel. So let's again take a deep breath. Very good. We have just a few quick announcements before we turn this over to Michael. During the last eight years, we've been presenting every two months an online live five-hour streaming event with Michael. And we've been calling these our in-studio classes. They are free, of course, to any and all members of the Masters Unplugged program. But we also created for non-subscribers a video-on-demand page which allows anyone to rent, well, really a small sample of these classes for up to 90 days. Well, I'm sorry, for up to seven days. <laughs> 90 days was the old format. And our latest class was presented last month on the summer solstice, and it was titled A Reality Reset. The response we received from many who participated in that class was so inspiring that we made this class available to anyone to also enjoy. So let's take a quick look at the sample trailer and allow you to see and feel if this is something that your heart's really drawn you into. of you agreed to allow the presence of consciousness to now be a part of your life. And that choice, as beautiful as it is, is such a bold choice. Because that choice isn't just a simple reboot. You signed up for a complete, total reality reset. One that, for the most part, is unknown to your basic biological hard drive. Unfortunately for your hard drive, there are no known software programs that can replicate this type of reset, even though your mind wishes there were. You can see how so many of your institutions have tried to offer an acceptable substitute, but ultimately you realize there's nothing quite like the real thing. Or said another way, there really is no substitute. But was it really real more thing? about living an orgasmic life? Ah. Because now you're getting closer, much closer, to how we experience life. How I, Michael, why go for the Big Bang? 
when it's just one wave after another that never stops? Or is it even something deeper? Something deep inside of you that hasn't been allowed to be part of this human experience. You realized what's the point of all these incarnations, all these lifetimes, if something was always missing every single lifetime. Oh, your past lifetimes on earth have been okay, but they've been far from ecstatic. And of course, whenever you and I would talk about the potential of it being ecstatic, well, you know the rest of that story. You would always ask, Michael, is it really possible? And if it is, has anyone done it before? Sure. You call them the ascended masters. But you would always ask, has anyone done it as a collective? And I've looked to my beloved friends next to me. I'd ask all around. And there was a resounding, no, no, that would be a first. And apparently that was all you needed to hear. And so here we are. Here you are. And here I am, playing my part in this grand unfoldment, this grand movie, to ask you, living what? Here you are, living what? An ecstatic life? Is it time for the reality reset, dear ones? So what needs to be done, my dear friends? Is it really time to move out of your addiction to doing life? Do you understand what I'm saying? The addiction to always be doing to life the addiction to always be thinking about what needs to be done. The addiction to always be thinking when there's nothing to do, but to simply be in life. Let's take a deep breath there. It sounds so simple, incredibly simple, and yet only a true master, one who is actually willing to be a true and authentic lover of life, will ever allow this to become real, tangible. You see, you're beingness has no fear. It has no worries. It's not concerned about anything. And to your mind, that presence leaves it feeling completely unemployed because there's nothing to feed on that's based on doing life. Within your beingness, all is indeed well. 
Because that is your beingness. And that is you, too. Yes, indeed. So we know that a reality reset really isn't for everyone, but it is for all of you. I mean, this is why you're here. This is why you're participating in what we are presenting is to step out of that old programming, all those conditioned ways of behaving, of relating to life, only perceiving reality from your mind, allowing the heart in the presence of your own soul to be at the forefront of your life. It's not for everyone, but apparently it rings our bell. Apparently it speaks to our heart. So we're now offering this class as well as I think we have four or five other classes posted on our video on demand page for a limited time. We're giving you a 50% discount to take advantage of this opportunity to help support you reset your own reality. So you can check that out on our website. Just go to our video on, on demand page and go ahead and choose whatever you want to choose there. You can go ahead and rent as many of those as you want. You have up to seven days to watch it in its entirety. So we introduced a new feature to this show several months ago called the Creators in Action. And that's, well, that would have worked really well if I had put in the, uh, <laughs> the right image there. I'm still working with this. You know, this isn't easy to do from my end, to be with Michael's energy and to work with this computer. And, but I guess I'm really stubborn. I'm going to make this work. Creators in Action allows some of our fellow creators to showcase their own unique gifts. And that would be any and all of you. So this month, we're honored to share the work of uh, Kaya Kohanska. And so let's take a peek at her video while we step back here and...
Wow, just beautiful images and a wonderful heart-based service. Thank you, Kaya, for sharing your creation. I love the energy behind your work and love that soundtrack. Wow, I just love that soundtrack. Maybe we could find out what that is too and put that on all of our players and listen to that as we're driving down the road. Great passion behind it. So feel free to contact Kaya anytime you want. If you'd like more information about her services, she posted all that at the end of the, her uh, video clip here. Uh, and thank you again, all of you who are interested in sharing some of your own creations. You just go ahead and visit our website and send us a short video using the contact form. Now, I know I've gotten some emails from some of you saying you don't have any experience working with video, but some of these videos that you're seeing here are done by people that are just like you. They don't have any experience. So there's online some really simple programs that can help you to create a pretty simple but dynamic video presentation. And I'm insisting on video because it represents more of the dynamic presence of what all of us are working with. It's not so static and uh, one dimensional. We use a service called We Video, but there are a lot of others that you can choose from. Uh, we just happen to like We Video because all the, well, I think there's over 5,000 um, different soundtracks and video clips that are all royalty free, meaning uh, they're copyright protected. You're free to use them in any of your work without uh, violating the, the maker's own copyright. So finally, we like to remind you that next month as well, we have back here uh, Joachim Hofram as a special guest. Uh, if you're not familiar with his work, he's the author of the recent Crystal Dragon book series. And if you follow the Crimson Circle, you know that this is, of course, the time for the dragon. So be sure to mark that interview on your calendar. I'm really looking forward to having a dialogue with uh, Joachim. And if you have any questions you'd like me to ask him, or for me and Michael, feel free to send us an email anytime before that show, and I'll see if I can get to him. Very good. So let's take another deep breath here. If you have any questions or comments about any of our programs and services, feel free to contact us anytime. And as I do each month, I enjoy sharing a imperfect, <laughs> but very tangible relationship I have with my own eternal self, the being that all of you know is Michael. But before I do that, I'd like to thank all of you for having the courage to go where very few human beings feel safe to explore. It's that rare. In so many ways, it would have been so much easier for all of us to just continue our life in a semi-conscious state because then we wouldn't be feeling all the things we're feeling now. I know how difficult that is as I have gone through that and continue to go through that in my own life. Yesterday, Coco and I went to go see the movie called Yesterday, a movie that honors the beauty and the uplifting messages and music of the Beatles. We've all come a long ways since those early days of their music. And maybe the world at large didn't embrace the innocence of those times. And of course, maybe we missed that kind of innocence, that kind of gentle heart-based interaction that those of us that are the baby boomers of this world got to experience it in that way. But that doesn't mean that we didn't make it real in our own lives. It's taken us a while to disconnect from all the distractions to make that innocence more a part of what we are doing in our own day-to-day -day reality. So I gladly play the role as a type of messenger for Michael, but I also know that I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of you who are watching this show today, on behalf of a heart that embraces the innocence and the sacredness of all of life. Now I get it. 
earth can be a really harsh place to feel both the sacred and not so sacred coexisting on this, what it feels at times like a very fragile planet. I know it breaks your heart to witness all the ways that life continues to be disrespected in a variety of ways. And that is why I'm so honored to call each of you my fellow creators, those who are willing, despite all the distractions and all the obstacles, to keep your own heart at the front of your life. Yes, indeed we are. Thank you, Robert. Beautifully said, I am Michael. And let's start again by taking that deep breath. Very good. Very good. Fragile times they are, are they not? Both in relationship to your own physical body, in relationship to your emotions. Very fragile for your mind. Fragile as well for what you are giving birth to this planet and to all of creation. Because you are here on this planet, it is serving all of creation. Fragile indeed. A lot of distractions that could make things go sideways. And so it does take really a true master, one who is willing to be so honest about what's really going on inside of you. A master who is willing to acknowledge how are you really feeling inside of you and then to accept it. Yes, the master accepts whatever is going on inside of you. And then the master allows who you also are, that divine part of who you've always been, to also be in this, this experience with the parts that are frightened, the parts that question, the parts that really don't know this divine presence, the way that your heart knows it, the way that you feel it in your own body. So let's begin today by feeling the presence of your body. Let's take a moment using your arms to just embrace that body of yours. And breathe with this for a while. Holding on to that physical body. It's a gift. Then allow yourself to acknowledge, are there any feelings inside of you that don't feel safe being in this body? Does it feel that you are confined, restricted, can we acknowledge any of those feelings right here and now? And instead of judging them, instead of pushing against them, can we just accept them? Whatever part of you is feeling that way about being in this physical reality, can we just accept whatever they're feeling? And then can we allow who you also are, what we call your own soul nature, to be here too? And when you allow that soul nature to be in this body with you, do you notice something shifting in how you're feeling about being in this physical body? Does it feel more safe knowing that you're not alone? Very good. Very good. This is not for the faint of heart, dear ones. Being in physical reality where it's become so dense and in a way energetically it does feel very restrictive if you're only playing by the rules that have been presented to you. And of course, then you're relating to your own physical body with all these carbon-based cells that are and have been conforming themselves to 
all the rules that you've been asked to, to own, to adapt yourself to, in order to just survive. So while you're allowing this other presence, what we consider to be the real you, to also be here in your body with you, do you begin to also to feel a type of joy emerging? And while you're feeling this joy, tune into the presence of this group that is listening to this. Both those who are attending here live and all of those who have chosen to participate in the recorded version. You see, dear ones, you've been relying on the presence of us, your angelic friends, as a support base almost every lifetime. And it got awkward almost every lifetime because there wasn't a really clear connect there. Such was the density of this reality here on earth. But you've created something so unique and so beautiful by allowing your own non-physical counterparts to also be with you, you can now connect to each other. Does it require you to be in the same room? Globally, you can feel the love and support that is being shared. One human to another that has consciously allowed the presence of your soul, your eternal self, to also be here with you. This is a big shift in how you're able to trust one another and support one another in ways that wasn't possible in other lifetimes. There weren't too many of you here doing this in other lifetimes. And then, of course, you can tune in to the entourage of non-physical beings that are also here today. In particular, there's my presence, but I am not a singular being, just like you. And so one of the facets of me, of course, is the presence of Archangel Michael. He is always right next to me. And on the other side, of course, is another friend, a friend to all of you, my dear friend, Yeshua. So take a deep breath there. As you're feeling this love and support between each of you as human beings, may we share also our love for you. Very good. As one heart to another, acting as supports to each other, allowing the presence of that eternal self. It represents such a significant choice in the life of any human being. How does it feel to know that all of your support, all of your well-being now exists inside of you? in the form of the other you, the eternal, non-physical you. And then, of course, as we allow ourselves to feel our own divine counterparts, then those feelings that we referred to initially, the human part, some of those emotions that don't feel safe here, are scared, don't have anything that they can rely on based in your past, whether it be this lifetime or 
just about any other lifetime to reassure these feelings that it's safe to be here as a physical human being. Can we simply share our radiance as being, as being life too? We're not denying any other parts of who you are as a human from feeling what we are also feeling in our own hearts right now. It's an open love fest between all the different parts of you, both the parts that trust and the parts that don't. You see, dear ones, becoming an awakened human being is only fulfilling now if you consciously choose to keep your light, to keep your own presence in the front of your own life. Unfortunately for all of you, there are no benchmarks for any of you to follow that would support the choice that you've made here now. And what each of you have chosen that hasn't been experienced by any other being represents a collective embodied human soul relationship. Such as a relationship of, as this is so rare and so potent that it cannot be contained with any one individual, any one group, or any one organization. It's simply much too big for any of that. But it can be supported by a variety of individuals in supports to each other acting as supports to each other, supported by a variety of groups and organizations acting as supports to one another, accepting the differences and allowing each to be as they are. Simply because the very nature of what you are also embodying perceives life very differently than most of humanity. The nature of what you have chosen to embody is all-inclusive. Dear ones, you're at the forefront of this change of consciousness on this planet. We know you're not asking for any followers, but get over it. The family of humanity will follow you. You know, from your human perspective, you perceive your own unique spiritual family as somehow being more evolved in you, but it couldn't be, it couldn't be true or you, each of you, wouldn't be here. Because this takes the best of every spiritual family to endure what you have endured and continue to endure. So from our perspective, all of your spiritual families, just like humanity, follow you. And we're not just placing this on the human, because that's not a gift to your own human nature. To your own human nature, when we speak like this, it feels like a huge burden, a heavy responsibility. And it can feel a bit overwhelming if you're stuck in a little drama. But it truly is an honor to set this change in motion 
by allowing who you also are to be in relationship with that human part. We are so honored to be of service to such a profound choice. Your life on earth has been but a reflection of all the unresolved galactic issues you've been carrying with you for eons. Let's take a breath there. Until now. Until now. Because you've discovered a solution to your conditioned response to anything that appears to be the opposite of you. Who you think or feel yourself to be as being the light incarnate. It has always been at your disposal, but it took a tremendous amount of trust on your part to allow something so pure, so innocent, to also look through your own eyes? And what did you discover? You discovered that you too are this divine presence. The eternal one, perceiving life without any agenda. And as much as all of you say how much you want this presence to be in your life, there are also parts of you that do not welcome it with open arms. You can feel it as we speak. There isn't that deep trust. There isn't that open allowance. What are these parts supposed to do if all indeed is well? <laughs> indeed. Good question. Good question. You can feel their influence throughout your day, but we're here to tell you again that they only represent one of the many versions of you. We call this human version the mental emotional version of you. That part of you that adapted itself to the collective consciousness of your human family. A consciousness that is stuck within a galactic story that fears opposites of itself. You call this duality. How is this mental, emotional version of you feeling about being in this physical reality? Does it have one or two trust issues here at the front of your life? And can we acknowledge it? Can we accept it? When we invite any of you, just for the fun of it, and simply because you can, to just feel really turned on by your life, how does this part, this version of you, respond to that? Does it remind you of your physical issues? There's really no time for feeling turned on as long as you're dealing with a variety of physical symptoms that leave you feeling very uncomfortable? Does it remind you of your emotional issues? Of course, the lack of trust, the lack of respect, the lack of intimacy, the lack of direct communication, the lack of joy and passion. And of course, this version of you also created those very emotions that are stuck. But let's leave that alone for now. 
is the real issue for this version of you, this mental, emotional version of you, really all about energy? How's it going to support itself, dear ones? If you're feeling really turned on by your life for no reason, just because you can choose to feel that way anytime you want? How is this version of you going to support yourself if you're feeling really turned on? Because for the longest time, sympathy has served as a type of fuel for so long that this version of you can't imagine any other way. Ah, uh, but you did. You did. You found you have actually a very active imagination at your disposal. Anytime you allow another version of yourself to be at the front of your life. We call this your intuitive version. One that relies on a type of divine presence for all of its support. It doesn't need to process emotions because it doesn't rely on emotions to express how it feels. That can be so foreign to the human part that only knows emotions as being the feeling part of you. You've been hooked into believing that if you're not emotional, you must be very stuck in your mind. You must be frightened of how it feels to be open to feeling. But it is your mind that created these emotions not only to express itself, but to support itself energetically. Sympathy being one of the primary emotions that bring some very potent energies into its life, into your life, into your physical body, which ends up then supporting a variety of carbon-based cells in your body. But the intuitive version doesn't think about itself. It doesn't use emotions to express itself. It simply knows itself without the need to always be thinking about it. What a relief. <laughs> Imagine your days. Let's do that. Imagine your days filled with non-thinking moments that perhaps extend into minutes, hours. Imagine how that would feel. No processing. No emotions getting stirred up because your mind's hungry. We're going there. Some of you are there. And it takes a real master to make this real from the inside out. And all of this, all of it is really confusing to that mental, emotional version of you. And this is where we find so many of you as we speak. You're kind of feeling split between these two versions of you. And the good news there are also countless other versions that are just waiting to be acknowledged. And as I say this, I can feel in all of you a joy-filled response from your heart. Really? Really? This is not a closed system? We're not trapped here? We're not stuck in this body? No, you are not. But if you're only looking through the eyes of your mind and only allowing your emotions to feel for you, then it does appear 
to that version of you that you are stuck here. You are confined. And indeed, looking outside in, this is not a safe place for you to be. So what does your mind think about all of this? In an embodied human-soul relationship, the reliance on a singular identity must expand for the soul to even be present. And that's not an easy transition for your mind to accept. Why? Well, if you're talking about the biological computer that you call your brain, it has a very limited capacity to process multi-layered information. Oh, you think it's pretty fast. <laughs> but that's a relationship to your brain from a disconnect from consciousness itself. Because your soul has its own unique ability to perceive and coexist within multiple realities all at the same time, without feeling confused, without feeling insecure, without feeling lost, without losing its sense of self. But to the mental, emotional version of you, this sounds like science fiction. We get it. It's scared. It should be, if it's still at the front of your life. It's not capable of working with all of the realities that are available to you and all the different versions that exist in a variety of realities that are available to you, it must step back and serve the intuitive version. That's the solution for your mind. Allow more than just one version of you to also be in your life. And this is why we need to transcend this addiction to a dualistic version of reality. In that version, there exists a conditioned pushback to anything that is the opposite of itself. You see it here in, in reality here, in physical reality, every single day. But when you allow the intuitive version of you to coexist with your mind and your emotion, something profound does occur. You begin to feel a sense of trust slowly develop between opposites. Wow. Wow. Collective partnerships begin to emerge where none existed before beginning from within. And then they are created outside of you. Imagine how that will impact humanity. But none of this would be possible if it wasn't allowed first within the individual who chooses to make that possible in their own version of reality. And this, dear ones, is why you and I are here. In service to the sacredness of all of life. To introduce a solution to all of your perceived problems by simply embodying a state of consciousness that is capable of working with anything that is the opposite of it. It is only through the eyes of your own divine nature that you could possibly perceive beyond all the problems, all the differences, and be okay with it, to allow it to be. Building walls to separate the mental, emotional version of you from the heart of creation has its own agenda. It is a fearful, protective stance 
that allows that part of you to support itself and continue to support itself as a consumer of life, extracting from life whatever it needs simply to survive. This mental, emotional version of you feels this shift in your life. And you can feel its reaction to the choice that you have made. It feels it's being displaced. And it's right. But it's being displaced from a place of honor. It's being offered the opportunity to now serve the intuitive, intuitive version of you. Its response is very emotional. But are those now your true feelings? Are they? For those of you who are embodying this human soul relationship, can you feel both the joy from your own heart and the fear from your own mind? Again, this is not for the faint of heart. Then how do you know the difference between the mental emotional version and the intuitive version? The mental emotional version of you is reactionary. It always reacts to life emotionally based on what you experienced in your past. Now, not all human beings are going to welcome this change, see it as a blessing, or even recognize it as the second coming of Christ consciousness. So be it. That is not your problem. Don't make it your problem. Creation is a very big place. There's room for everyone, room for all. Your job here in your own life is to not get distracted by the collective mental, emotional versions of itself. Because there now exists a collective intuitive version, but like all things that are new, it is very, very fragile. And because of this, it needs your full attention. It requires of each of you that you now live your life consciously. Consciously. Thank you, dear ones, for having the courage to go where very few human beings are willing to explore from the inside out. And from inside of you, the other versions of you are beginning to come forward as never seen before on this planet. I, Michael, am honored to be called your friend in service to the sacredness of all of life. All well, my blessings, dear ones.